So there once was a guy named Eric who signed a lease agreement for a house that he was renting. And this contract stated that if he watered the grass regularly and kept the lawn green, the landlord would cover the cost of the utilities. The day after Eric signed the contract, he had his father over and he told his dad that he was not going to water the lawn. His dad was confused and so he said to Eric, well, because of that contract, you really don't have that choice. And, and Eric was frustrated. So he looked at his dad and he said, I have my agency, don't I? Isn't it my choice if I water the lawn or not? So then his dad replied, well, you don't get to pick what part of the contract that you abide and which part you don't. The point of a contract is that a person is making a commitment about what they intend to do. Then Eric again said, but what about my agency? His dad replied, you still have that. You can choose to break the contract, but then you will have to pay for the utilities yourself. When I said you didn't have a choice, I was assuming that you wanted to honor your contract. Sure, you can choose what you want, but you can't choose what you want and honor your contract at the same time. So I bring up this story because there's a video going around on the internet right now of a state conference where this very idea was taught and some people are really upset by it. Now young men, I hope you'll think about this carefully because there's an important doctrine here. Do you have a choice whether to serve a mission? I'm going to tell you why you don't. Now that might rub you the wrong way because we're so big into liberty and agency and, and we do believe we're a free democratic kind of people, right? But here's why you don't have the choice anymore. It's because when you were baptized, you signed on to the Lord's plan, which is giving up free agency and accepting moral agency. The difference being that we give up thinking that we know for ourselves what is best in our lives, and we trust the Lord to give us the direction that is best for us in our lives. And so, young man, if that sounds like foreign doctrine to you, I hope you'll reconsider the importance of that baptismal and sacramental covenant, where every week we come to church and we say, I'm giving up what I think is best, and I trust the Lord to guide and direct me in my life. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Unfortunately, this is one of the most disturbing things I've heard in quite a while. Yesterday, I received the following video recording of an LDS or Mormon Church state conference in Davis County, Utah. Now, as you just saw, John DeLynn made an entire video recently saying how disturbed he was by this basic Christian doctrine of being born again and allowing our will to be swallowed up by the will of Christ as we take his name upon us. And with that name, we are to represent him at all times and in all places and in all things. Now, this is why you need to be buckled up. When we enter into that covenant and begin to have the name of Christ come upon us, our agency is enlarged. It's no longer individual agency. It is enlarged to become representative agency and representing Christ and his name at all times, in all places, and, and in all things, becomes more important than what we want. We have already pledged that we will keep the commandments. Have you heard someone say, a member of the church who has entered into the baptismal covenant, I have my agency, I can do what I want. You ever heard that? Yeah, you know what the answer is? No, you can't. You don't understand agency. You don't have agency to do whatever you want. We have the hymn, Choose the Right, don't we? In Espanol? Tenemos el himno, yeah. uh, haz tú lo justo. The hymn is called Choose the Right, not Choose What You Want. <laughs> it's really not that complicated. Here's the basic argument. Premise one. In the baptismal covenant, we pledge to obey Christ's commandments. Premise two. Christ has commanded young men to fulfill all their priesthood responsibilities. Premise three. A full-time mission is a priesthood responsibility for all worthy young men. Therefore, logically, we as men do not have a choice to keep our baptismal covenant 
and refuse to serve a mission if we are worthy. And the speaker at that state conference and Elder Bednar are assuming that the people that they are speaking to want to keep their baptismal covenant, and thus they are telling them that they don't have the choice to both keep their baptismal covenant and abandon their priesthood responsibilities. But let's see if the critics like John DeLynn have any valid points. You always have a choice, especially when you're an adult. Yes, we know, John. We know that we can break our covenants, but the speaker was assuming that his audience wanted to keep their covenants. Number three, beware of any human that tells you that they know what God wants for you in your life. Would Jesus agree with the advice to ignore his prophets? O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord." When you were baptized, you were far too young to make that decision. He does realize that we renew our covenant each week, right? I mean, the final decision for going on a mission is made when a person is an adult. And if that adult is not actively at that time renewing their covenant as an adult, then they are not worthy to go on a mission. So no, this is not some contract you only signed when you were eight. Let's not be disingenuous. Your main job in life right now, in my opinion, is to work hard to figure out what is healthiest for you in your life. That's your job. Don't let anybody tell you that they know what's best for you. This honestly sounds like advice a 15-year-old gives to his friend after he gets in a fight with his parents. Has John completely forgot that we are Christians? Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child. The same as greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Sadly enough, my young friends, it is a characteristic of our age that if people want any gods at all, they want them to be gods who do not demand much. Comfortable gods, smooth gods, who not only don't rock the boat, but don't even row it. (laughs) Gods who pat us on the head, make us giggle then tell us to run along and pick marigolds. Talk about man creating God in his own image. Sometimes, and this seems the greatest irony of all, these folks invoke the name of Jesus as one who was this kind of comfortable God. Really? He who said, Not only should we not break commandments, but we should not even think about breaking them? Now, John had a few other points, but they were not even really worth addressing. The reality is that when we renew our baptismal covenant each week, we again take upon ourselves the name of Christ and take upon ourselves all the blessings and obligations associated with that covenant. We are indeed free always to break that covenant, But those who address the church are under the assumption that baptized members, who likely just took the sacrament, want to keep their baptismal covenants. And those leaders should help us understand that we can't simply choose anything if we want to still remain faithful to that covenant. Leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear what you think. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and hit the subscribe button. Also, if you want more content, including the podcast, go to thoughtful-faith.com. Thanks for watching.